Again, welcome to Calculus. This lecture covers limits, which is chapter two of our course textbook. So our main objective in this lecture is, is to determine left and right hand limits of a functions. Also, we are going to determine if a limit of a function exists as S approaches a real number A. So first we start with the polynomial function. Again, from our previous lectures on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of polynomial function, uh, we discuss, again, we define also the polynomial function. So a polynomial function look as the following form, P at S equal to A N, S to the power N plus A N minus one, S to the power N minus one, all the way to A zero. Now we should know that where each exponent is a positive integer. So all the exponent must be a positive integer. And also the A values must be a real numbers. Normally we will say that the A values are the coefficient of the X variables and A zero will be a constant value. So we start with the one-sided limit of a polynomial function. Now the negative here means from left, so here we say we have a limit P at X as S approaches A from left. The answer will be P at A. Same thing, the limit P at X as S approaches A from right, the answer also will be P at A. So this means if we are finding the limit of a polynomial function, uh, we are not going to be concerned whether the values is approaching from left or right because the answer will be the same. So let's see an example. Yeah, they say we, we should find the values of each of the following one-sided limits. Uh, the negative means from the left, positive means from the right, but the steps of solving them are the same because either from the left or right approaches, the answer is the same. So let's look at the first question. And actually that's what we say here, since each function is a polynomial function, if the one-sided limit can be found by substitute a for x, that's it. So it doesn't matter whether it's three approaches from left or s approaches two from right, it doesn't matter. So to solve this problem, the first example, we have a limit s squared plus 3s minus 7 as s approaches 3 from the left. All we need to do is to substitute the value of x with 3. So our answer will be 3 squared equal to 3 times 3 minus 7. So our final answer will be 11. Now let's look at the second question. We have a limit s cubed minus 5x as s approaches 2 from the right. Again, the same method as we did as the values approaches from left. So we substitute 2 for x we get two cube minus five times two. And that will give us minus two. We get eight minus 10 and the answer will be minus two. The third question, we have limit four S squared minus eight X plus three as S approaches zero from the left. Again, it doesn't matter. And we substitute X with zero. So our answer will be four times zero square minus eight times zero plus three. And that will give us three. Actually the answer should be four times zero is zero. Minus eight times zero also is zero. So plus three remain. So three plus zero plus zero give us three. So now let's go to what we call the unbounded limits. So in our free previous examples, it's called a bounded limit because the S approaches a specific value either from left or right. Now, if it's a polynomial function, we just substitute the value that S is approaches to. Now in our bounded limit, we are going to have either positive infinity or negative infinity. As we all know, negative infinity means very, very small value. Positive infinity is a very large value bounded. So here we say if a limit is indicated to be positive infinity or negative infinity, then it does not exist. 
these symbols are used only to indicate the direction of unboundedness. So here we have infinity one-sided limit, which is also called unbounded one-sided limit. And we start with the positive infinity limit. So here we said that if f at s increases without bound as s approaches a from the left or from the right, then we say that f at s approaches positive infinity because it increases. Uh, so again, we can see limit f at x as s approaches a from the left will be positive infinity or limit f at s as s approaches a from the right also be positive infinity. And we can see from the graph here. So as s approaches a by doesn't touch it, it's going increasing. Now we also have the negative infinity. Here we said if f at s is decreasing, so it's going to be the smaller decreasing without bound as s approaches a from the left or from the right, then we say that f at s approaches negative infinity. So limit f at x as s approaches a from left or a from right is equal to negative infinity. Here, if f at s is decreasing without bound. So let's see an example here. We have a limit s plus five divided by s plus three as s approaches negative three infinity. So, the, so we should find the solution for this. So here we say that as S approaches negative infinity from the left, then denominator will always be negative, but will approach zero. So the absolute value of a denominator will get smaller and smaller. So for example, we have negative 3.1 plus 3 will give us neg negative 0.1. And then negative 3.01 as is again going down uh, plus three will give us negative 0 0.01 and it keep getting smaller, smaller. Now, when we look here, actually we get negative. If we substitute, we get negative three plus three and the top will be negative three plus two. So that will give us two. Now, 2 divided by 0, it doesn't exist. So this means we have to, so here we say that's the fraction, s plus 5 over s plus 3 will become very large in the negative sense, or will be unbounded in the negative direction. So the limit here, the answer will be negative infinity. As we can see, S will be decreasing, going all the way down. And if S is decreasing at the top, we have plus five. So this value again will be. Now let's try the second one. This is, S is approaching negative three, but this time from right. So from right means it's going to increase. So the same idea here, S approaches negative three, from the right, so we get S plus three will always be positive. This is approaching from the right, S plus three will always be positive because we start from three, four, five going up. Uh, so this is what we are having here, positive values, but the numerator will still be two. But because again, therefore the fraction of this will become unbounded in the positive direction. So we are going to have a positive infinity. The value will be increasing. So to study the graph shown for y, f at x, we can find the following one-sided limits. So let's say we are looking for the limit f at s as s approaches two from the left. So the solution here will be positive infinity. S approaches two, positive two from the left. So we can see the graph again is not so to be positive infinity. Now, if S approaches two from the right, then the answer will be three 
from the right. And we have three. Now find a one-sided limit using the graph again. Here we said that f at two equal to one according to the graph, but this fact does not affect either the left or right limits in A and B. As we can see from the graph, if s approaches two, if s up, uh, f at x uh, f at two equal to one, because again f at two means if s is two we have again one. So the solution here will be three. If limit F at S as S approaches four from the left, uh, S approaches four from the left. So S approaches four from the left, we get again our answer here. That's the point here. So the answer again will be three. And then limit f at, s, as, uh, f at x as s approaches 4 from the right. Also, we get the same 3 from the graph. Now, let's, let's, let's talk about limit defined informally. So here we said that if the values of f at s get closer and closer to some number l as values of x that are smaller than some number t, and the values of x that are larger than t get closer and closer to t, but they are not equal to t, then L is the limit of f at x as s approaches t. And this is what we mean. So if you have a limit f at s as s approaches to t from the left, the answer is L. Same thing, limit f at x as, as s approaches t from the right, the answer is L. So if that is the case, we always say that limit f at x as, as s approaches t, either left or right, the answer will be L. So this will lead us to some few definition here. Now the existence of a limit, we say that the limit of a function f as s approaches a real number t exists if only if limit f at x as s approaches t equal to l, where l will be a real number. Now, the limit f at x as, as s approaches t from left is not equal to the limit f at x as s approaches t from the right. If that is the case, then limit f at s as s approaches t does not exist. So as we saw in the previous formula, we can see the limit f at s if t, s approaches t from the left and s approaches t from the right, the answer is the same L, then the limit exists. But if the answer is not the same, then the limit doesn't exist. Now the same thing if limit f at x as s approaches t equal to positive infinity or limit f at s as s approaches t equal to negative infinity. Then here we can say that the limit f at s as s approaches t also does not exist because here we are getting two different answers. So let's see some example. Here we are going to use the graph again. Limit f at x as s approaches three and also b limit f at s as f s approaches zero. Now, using the graph y equal to f at s, we can see how we have two graphs here. Between x between 3 to 6 or 7, actually, that is the point here. We have a, a linear and also a constant function. So let's see our first solution. We're looking for limit f at x as s approaches three from the left. So S approaches three from the left, the answer will be one. So that's why from the graph we have one. And the same thing, S approaches three from the right, the answer will be one from the graph. When S is three, Y is one. So this means the limit exists. Now, if we have zero from left is one, and also zero from right also is one. Then again, the same thing. 
it exists. Now, if you do f at zero equal, equal to two, the limit f at x as x approaches zero, we give s one. Now, next, if we have limit g at x as s approaches negative two, we should use the graph here to find the limit. Also, when s approaches two, what will be the answer? So let's look at the first. The first answer will be three. Let's see the reason why as s approaches negative two, we can see the dot here, y is three. And the second one is positive positive two, here we say the answer is zero from the right. So let's look that and also one. So we can see that when S approaches two from the right, positive two, we have zero and also we have negative one, two points. So B, we have negative one and also we have zero. Now, since S approaches two from the left is negative one, as we saw the, the left graph. And then from right two is zero. Here we say that the limit G at X as S approaches two does not exist. Does not exist. Now let's, let's determine this function. Now here we are going to find limit using algebra concept. So when a question like this is given, first we try to substitute as more or less a polynomial. So we substitute the two, but you can see that at the bottom, we get zero. Any value divided by zero, there's no solution. So our next option is to factorize the expression or trying to solve the expression to minimize it. So our solution here, as we said, is zero. And this is the expression we can find the difference of two square, s square minus four, we give us s plus two, s minus two. Then we cancel s minus two and s minus two. So this will give us 10 s plus two. Now we can be able to solve this question. So the limit 10 times s plus two as s approaches two, we substitute the two and we get our solution. So our solution here will be 40. Now let's try the second one, the same thing. S approaches five, so five minus five is zero. So any value divided by zero is error. So we're trying to again factorize this problem. We know five cube will give us 125. So we can use the cube formula. And this will give us S minus five, S squared plus five S plus 25. That is the difference of a cube. That's the formula. Then we have S minus five cubed. So we can cancel one S minus five. Actually, that is the formula here. If you have A cube minus B cube, it's the same as A minus B times A square plus AB plus B square. So after we cancel, we can also look, can we still solve this problem? Uh, we look at it. If we put five here, still it doesn't work. So that's what we are saying. However, the, the numerator does not have a limit of zero, but the limit of the denominator is zero. So this means the, lim the limit fails to exist. So let's try the next question. Again, why if you substitute zero here, we cannot solve it. Now, if there's a possibility that we can factorize the top and cancel, then we can keep going. But in this case, we cannot. So the limit does not exist. Next example given here, the same thing, minus three plus three will give us zero because the limit S approaches negative three. If we substitute, we get zero. So what we do, we have to find a way to factorize the expression. So we factor first. And here we are able to Factorize the trinomial up, give us two S minus one times S plus three. So we can cancel. And then we get the limit two S minus one as S approaches neg negative three, this exists. So our solution will be negative seven. 
So that will be the conclusion of these lectures. Again, these lectures, we cover the basic concept of limit. And this section of limit will lead us to the beginning of calculus, which will be the derivative. So again, thank you for your time and see you in the class.